great. Um, so I also want to encourage people to apply if you haven't applied. Um, Steve and I just re-met. We met three years ago at a startup, and he was like, hey, you got to sign up for One Million Cups. And I remember putting it in my notes and my contacts, and over winter break, I was just kind of refreshing and going through what I do right before the new year, and so I signed up. So um, Steve, thanks for that push. Yeah, we got here. Okay, so Her Academy is a nonprofit organization, but as Terry and I were talking, like nonprofits, we are not for loss, right? We are here to make a difference and make an impact in social justice and the education system, and that is where Her Academy is focusing our efforts. So Her Academy stands for Her Educational Revolution, and that's because we started in 2018 right when the Me Too movements were, were happening. And so we wanted, to, um, we wanted to kind of accelerate where these women were having issues in the tech world. However, um, the business world shows that those tech, um, the, the, sorry, those tech jobs right now are the highest paying jobs. However, women aren't there. Um, you know, there's a lot of historically unrepresented individuals in there. So um, I worked at Battelle for about 13 years and at Battelle I ran um, a mission defense team that focused on delivering hardware and software to the special op forces. So as you can imagine, you're probably thinking, wow, do you have military experience? No, I don't have military experience. Um, is it dominated by man, uh, all men? Yes, it's dominated by all men. Um, how was that experience for me? It was one of the best jobs I had. It was so much fun. However, we found that when we were most successful in delivering very difficult, high pressure tasks, when we had gender diversity on our teams, we excelled and um, had the best time of our lives doing those projects. And so that's really how Her Academy came, came on. As a woman in STEM, I realized that technology is taking over the world in all market sectors. And so um, we really want to diversify what that looks like. So um, that's a little bit about myself. Um, I have two girls. It's really important that um, I, as a mother, not shove STEM down them, but they have other mentors as well. And where they get that, where kids get that, is in the classroom. So how we are different, there's a lot of nonprofits focused on STEM, focused on girls. However, our focus is one is professional development for teachers, the other is after school programs, and then the third is uh, summer camps. And so we're getting ready to um, launch into our summer camp right now. Uh, to give you a little bit of background of who we serve, we serve, um, we're really focused on girls and that curriculum piece that we've um, created is not that we're peakifying the curriculum, but we're giving them a voice and we're giving them um, an option to do what they're interested in. Um, along with that, um, we really uh, serve areas um, around Columbus. We have virtual events. Our team um, just completed an awesome event Saturday and Sunday. It was called Hero Code Camp. It was for girls third grade through 12th, and we had girls from 13 states participating. And so those events and workshops are part of um, our revenue where we get corporate funding from and they fund that as part of workforce development. Um, and then we said, mentioned the professional development and then integrating curriculum within. So I think that's the major gist of what we do. Happy to take questions. Yeah, that's a great question. The question is, do we teach just coding? Are there other digital platforms? So I would say with the younger grades, um, we do teach coding. However, um, we ensure that there's physical components with it. So we don't want them just to put in front of a computer um, and have all screen time and just do block-based coding or text-based coding. We want them to um, produce something. So that could be, um, Working with paper, uh, to give you, uh, maybe giving you some examples of what our young kids do, we will collaborate with the language arts teacher and they will 
Um, we have second graders who go through a unit of making their haiku, creating their haiku in language arts. And then they will work with the computer science teacher or that tech teacher um, in order to animate it um, within a scratch program. Um, we have kids who do um, autobiographies and then they make them come alive. And so we help the teachers. We do a lot of coaching. We do um, co-teaching with them. But here's the problem. Um, and I think there's probably two problems that I did not address. One is when a college graduate graduates, the average salary um, is for that, I should say, whatever, the average salary for a regular graduate, if you are someone going into tech, you're going to make 35% more just out of graduation with that tech career. And so what we want to do is we want to give, we want to give those who are not currently represented that opportunity and quite frankly it's not it's more than the opportunity but it's the confidence to choose that um, we work um, on the middle school side where they'll create web pages um, there's a lot of imaginative or imaginative so we really within our curriculum we have four C's we ensure there's computational thinking because uh, it's computer science um, that it's collaboration so we're breaking that stereotype that you know, it's this white guy in a hoodie working solo, um, but that it's very much those team components of it. Um, the creativity piece is really big, especially for girls. Um, we find that girls, when they have a problem, they're, they want to solve the world's problems, right? Like they're not focusing on something that's of interest to them. They're focusing on how they could change society or help their community. And then that other piece is communication. And so I would say a big piece of our curriculum and how we're teaching teachers now is we don't want the students to present their end product because really these products can always be revised, but the learning process really takes place in the vulnerability takes place through when you're in the middle of um, doing that project. So somebody might come up and be like, hey, I, I need to show my project because I'm stuck. And then somebody's like, oh, 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 oh. Um, or they'll kind of show where they're at and somebody else will be like, hey, that's a good idea. And so then now we're weaving in those social emotional pieces of like how to be a teammate and how to be respectful and, and provide feedback and things like that. So we do a large, I would say a, um, a large component of our curriculum is coding. But we, ensure, we always make sure that we have this physical computing piece of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So in the beginning you mentioned, you know, this is still a business even though it's a nonprofit. Right. So I guess I have a multi-part question. You could take whichever lane you want to yeah. take. So one part would be, as you mentioned, you, this stuff should be in the schools already. So if it does get there, then are you out of business or is that what your intention is? I mean, like if that happened, would you just stop and like, hey, we're done? Or if not, like what's the future? Where do you see that? Yeah, yeah. So ideally what we'd like to do is train teachers and then do like a, a coaching model with them. So say for $10,000, you, you touch in with us twice a month um, and we're going to coach you through. If you need professional development in your local, we do go into the classroom and help them. Honestly, to get, we want Ohio, we're headquartered in Ohio, although we, we want Ohio to be the number one in education, and quite frankly, we're not. And even as a nation, we're very far behind. So there could be 1,100 her academies, like, that's fine. It's, it's going to take a lot. And so ideally, what we want to do is go in, work with these teachers, give them professional development. And there isn't a lot of curriculum that excites the kids, so we do have curriculum that is licensable. So the idea is to teach them, get them excited, get them ready to go because teachers are not currently trained in computer science. So there's a need, the workforce needs these kids. However, the teachers are graduating college and haven't had any formal training in what that looks like. And so we're kind of, we're that plug so that we give them that professional and then they can license that curriculum and, um, and do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a human and as a parent, like, like yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was a journey in the journey. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I, I really, okay, so the question was, how is my personal transition from Battelle into this current um, position? And so, um, 
This is a great question. So when I was at Battelle, um, like I'm noted, I, I led a team, it was majority men. And I didn't have a uh, military background, but we had a missile defense team in Huntsville, Alabama. We had a team um, at Picatinny Arsenal in New Jersey. And what I was really good at was just taking risk and trusting my subject matter experts and moving quickly and um, allowing myself, although it's really hard um, in corporate if you make a mistake, but willing to make that mistake and kind of revert a little bit. Um, but it was 99% men on my team. Um, I reported to a, a rear admiral, and I was the first woman to ever report to him. Um, and I spent probably 20 hours a week as a woman justifying my decisions and what I was doing. And um, yeah, so, but that was like all I knew, right? So then um, there's a school down the road, um, an all girls school called Columbus School for Girls. And I met with that head of school and she was like, listen, we have this new five year strategic plan and we have to train our girls for the future and we know it's in tech. And so she offered her academy um, free space to go in and start and utilize an all-girl atmosphere to create and reiterate and test our curriculum. So that if, if we excite their kids, then, um, then we're gonna excite really everybody. And so I went from this all-male, like very dominant, you wear a black suit or navy suit, like nothing in between, to like this huge girl empowerment, all girls. Um, it, was very hard, I would say too, going from a very large team to just me. And one of the things that I really liked at what I did is how um, the technical work I did, I could work with healthcare, I could work with underwater robotics, I could work with the manufacturing team in Hilliard. Um, so it was hard. I, I honestly would drive home thinking like, what did I do? Because I realized that I was really good at what I was doing and I, and I didn't realize it at the time. And I was very lonely. Um, I didn't get paid the first two months and I thought that I was going to. So I was also um, realizing some uh, financial struggles that were unexpected. And I took a lot of guilt and blame because I have a husband, our two girls were on my, on my benefits. So it, it was really, really hard. How I turned it around, um, I'm a woman of faith, and so I just got a few like mantra songs that I was like, I gotta play these every day at this time of the day because I know that drive home is where I'm really questioning myself. Um, and so that helped. And then what I realized, one of my strengths is relationships. And I was like, you know, I went from a big team and I loved that big team and I was running that big team and now I have to build relationships within this school and build respect. Because quite frankly, like educators are awesome at what they do. And if somebody's gonna come in from industry and act like, ah, I'm gonna teach the whole world about, you know, I know what I'm doing. And I didn't act like I knew what I was doing. I was really showing up in a learning experience, but they're, um, they're just like looking at me with one eyebrow up, right? So I flipped my mentality that those relationships that I build within the community and within that school is, is my team. And I could build that big team back up. And that really helped get through that transition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what other schools are you at besides Columbia School for Girls? And how do you have a team now? Yeah. yeah. So I have an awesome team right here. They're amazing. So life became so much easier when this team came on board as well. Um, we, um, we are currently at Mansion Day School. Um, we're at St. Joseph Montessori School. And then within our programs, we probably work with students from 20 schools around Central Ohio. Um, last year we were in um, an inner city school in Cincinnati. Um, Gamble Montessori School. And um, I think coming from industry and kind of being that solo woman, I really 
feel like I have a big passion around networking these girls just outside of their current communities. So we find um, when we bring these girls together, we don't talk about what school they go to or where they live, that they just have this interest to be challenged and learn something new that they've never done before. There's like this huge energy that takes place that we feed off of for days. Um, and so, you know, my hope is that these corporations no longer need women's networks, right? Like, we're in 2023 and we're still having the same problems that we had 23 years ago. Um, and so we feel that we are going to be that momentum that's going to make that change. Um, couple thoughts, questions. Thanks for sharing your journey, first of yeah. all, because I think um, one of these weeks will probably be like a town hall of just like, hey, it's kind of hard to be an entrepreneur and a business owner and stuff like that. But it's it's like, it is lonely and it's helpful to hear what other, and other people's like, this is how I kind of got through it. Um, so thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, are you connected with one school? I, we are not connected with okay. one school. I'm going to talk to you after. Okay. I love them and you guys will match very well. Also, um, so you're in the schools. I think I missed part of your presentation. So yep. sorry. So you're in the schools and then you have programs. And like you said, there you just had a program. There was like girls from 13 states. And yep. They felt really connected even virtually, which is really cool. Um, they, you said they wanted to like come back and like get on the screen and eat lunch together. And yeah. I thought that was cool. So yep. two part question. Yes. Um, what do you think you guys are doing to make that energy happen? Like the girls are bringing it, but you're facilitating that somehow. Yeah. And then are you finding that like they're staying connected outside? Or, like how are they yeah. that relationship? So we just had, did I mention this to everybody? We just, we're coming off one of our big highs. We had what we call Hero Code Camp, and it's a virtual event. It's for girls grades three through 12, and it's a national event. And um, our younger ones, particularly in my class, we were doing a reflection at the end about what they enjoyed, and they really enjoyed being connected with like-minded girls, like interested in computer science, because they're like, I'm the only one if I'm on a robotics team. And so um, during a break or lunch, of course we're on the screen for quite some time and we try to minimize that for the little ones. But they said, um, can we stay online and keep our screens open so that we can all eat lunch together? And so today is Wednesday, right? So yes, yesterday um, I was working on like, how do we take, great question, second part question, how do we take that momentum? So do we take that, so one of the thoughts is, do we take that momentum and offer something twice a month where these girls have a membership into her academy and then they pick one day a month that they can connect. Um, and, but how do we do that? The younger ones were okay online. We know that the older ones, um, and I know just Harry, you work with those older ones, they want the in-person close connections. So how do we pull that membership off with a team of three? And we, do, we did have great um, volunteers. And so I think that's the piece too, is we have to think about how do we pull from the community that want to help inspire these girls. Um, I did, so, and you also mentioned, how do we um, get these girls really excited? I honestly think it's, um, you know, these kids want to be challenged and we're providing that challenge. We're providing them something they've never done. And I think all of us can think of a time when we struggled through a new skill set, pretty difficult, and when we were able to like land it or nail it, most of us were by ourselves, but we all had that feeling of like, yes, right? Like you can feel that feeling right now. And so we are able to provide them an environment that um, is low pressure, but that they are gonna struggle a little bit but through their teammates, because what we'll do is we'll ask you know, their teammates, hey, does anybody have a thought on how um, so-and-so might get through this? And um, I think that is the fun piece for them, is that they're learning something new and they're being challenged and they're learning how to persevere through it. Yep. Uh, my question is, do you have a strategic uh, strategy or plan or are you are you working with other organizations in collaboration and partnerships? How can another organization or entity partner with you 
Gloria Partners, who you collaborate with? Um, yeah. And is there any type of collaboration? Okay, so great question. What is our uh, What's our strategy on collaboration with partners and others? So currently, we consider our partners the schools that we're working with. Okay. Um, we do have some partners around the corporate side if they're providing um, like a monetary value. We um, will also partner um, with maybe a corporation or a startup that we're helping them if they're a woman startup, kind of get their word out for them. I would say for right now, uh, as far as working with other organizations, and I think that's how we're going to um, grow, is just having that conversation of, is there a win for her academy in that other one? Because I'll give you an example. Um, I was in a meeting yesterday with someone who was like, hey, we love what you do. We've heard a lot of great things about you as a person, and we would like you to um, co-sponsor the Ohio Computer Science Summit. And immediately, right, we were all like, wow, that sounds great. Like, sign me up, yep, give me all the information, we're in. But I had to take a step back because we need to make a list of like, what, what do we want out of that, right? And we are really strong right now in that K through eight. And if all these educators that are coming are nine through 12, that's probably not worth our time. And so right now, it's a one-by-one -one decision um, until we kind of get what's really easy for us. Yeah, I love this question. I think Shannon over here is gonna be smiling really big. Um, we, we believe that we are gonna rewrite what those standards are. We, our curriculum is around the national state standards for Computer Science Teacher Association. And um, we started with Columbus School for Girls four years ago. And they mandated at that time with the partnership going in, the deal was, that all ninth grade girls were required to take computer science as a high school requirement. They said yes. And so as we started going in, they um, made a dedicated computer science position for their elementary. And we just did an evaluation last month of where they're at. And their second and third graders are doing fifth grade standards and their fifth graders are doing eighth grade and ninth grade standards. And so what we're showing is that, we're, actually what we're showing is what's possible. Because these standards for education, these AP classes and standards have existed for two decades. And I'm gonna be frank about it because I've seen from a side what the process is, is Ohio, as of 2019, they have Ohio standards for computer science and education, but what they did is they ripped them off another state. What did that state do? They ripped them off another state. And what did that state do? They ripped them off another state that was existed 15 years ago. And so we're not truly serving our kids and they're not meeting their potential of what's possible. And um, we also see that these kids, and the reason why they're able to do it is because they get it regularly. It's not just a computer science camp for one week out of the summer, we believe that any teacher can teach computer science if she or he um, is able to be vulnerable, make mistakes, and is willing to learn new things. They don't have to have a math and science background, right? Because computer science is intersecting now into all these different fields. We believe the same for a child. Any child can learn computer science. And one of the exciting things that we have that we're watching and we know that we need to start getting data on is our kids who are neurodiverse thinkers have learned a process of learning which is pretty similar to programming. And now, um, I remember I was, I was new in the classroom, I was helping, I was all excited and I'm in this classroom and this, afterwards this, we're trying to shuffle these students out so they get to the next class and this, little girl's like writing on a piece of paper. It was her first computer science class as a third grader and she's writing on a piece of paper and I'm like trying to get her out. 
and she comes up to me and she was like, Dr. Fursi, my name is so-and-so, my mom's name is so-and-so. She hands me the piece of paper and she said, I had so much fun today, can you tell my mom all about today? And so for me, I have no background on this kid, but I was like, yes, that was a win. And as this kid is walking out, the homeroom teacher and the science, computer science teacher like have tears in their eyes. And I'm like, oh, whoa, what did I miss? And they're like, listen, we meet every single week because this child struggles and has a very hard time completing her academic expectations. And because of that, it's hard for her to even be amongst her peers. And lo and behold, what we all realized and clicked is that we as educators just provided this child an opportunity to be a leader at something that she's excited about and, and can do like quite well. And that's what we saw happen over the year is that um, people would go to her and those things had never happened before. So now we're like changing the lives of children that are having a really hard time in archaic educational system. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now for that one, um, great engagement. Please continue your conversation after, if possible. Anybody else? Okay, so we need to make that connection. But anyway, um, last question we ask all our presenters yes. is what can we as a community do for you? What are some struggles, some, some connections, anything you need? Yeah, absolutely. So we have on um, the QR code, if you could sign up for our newsletter and pass on our information to others that you think and as you receive the newsletter if you see opportunities for girls or students um, in your personal world let them know i think the other thing too is like making introductions for us so right now it's important for us um, ohio is going to be passing a bill we're expecting that is going to be focused on computer science and so we know as an organization that we need to be credible um, and known to the community. And so right now, I want to meet like as many people in the community and tell them about her academy and the impact that we can make for Ohio so that we can start to realize collabor new collaborations. Um, and Terry, I think those um, may not just be in the schools, but also community type opportunities within computer science. So that's something that we could probably talk about. Yeah, so those two things, spread the word and help her academy um, get connected across the community. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to present, oh, present you your one more cup. Oh, cup. okay. Does it matter which one? This one? Okay. Does it, does it scheme needs to get a picture, so. Okay. <laughs> you got to take it. It's like the handoff picture. Grab. The kids tell me. <laughs> I know.